And hello, good people of the internet. This is Tommy Kelly, and this is, of course, the Tommy Kelly podcast. And I feel that at the beginning of each episode, I should probably give you some sort of weather or some sort of um, idea of what uh, scenery is around me. I don't know why, but I did it last time and I've done it a few times and it seems appropriate. So um, we've had a lot of really nice sun over the last couple of days. It's been really great. It felt like a Mediterranean country at times. It felt like you were on holidays, only you were in your own house or in your own area. But today it's a bit overcast, but it is early in the morning, uh, relatively. It's about 10.30 here. Uh, but the forecast for the week is very good, so um, Ireland should be in good form and all of those type of things. So that is good. In other news, one couple of quick announcements before I get into this properly. I talked before about the t-shirt, the Unifying Sigil t-shirt, and that the price I had it at, 20 euro, um, you know, I was only making about a dollar or something like that. What has actually happened because uh, of the fluctuations of, you know, dollar versus euro and stuff like that, I actually sold a t-shirt and it cost me money. So I have to look into that. So as I did promise that I wouldn't be putting up the price of that, but I, perhaps I may have to because there's obviously no point in selling stuff to lose money. I don't mind not making a lot of money, but I don't, certainly don't want to lose anything. But uh, there'll be more merchandise coming anyway, so that might make make it up overall. It might work out all okay. We'll see. But just wanted to give you a heads up and uh, to acknowledge that I'm probably going to have to renege on a promise I gave on the podcast before. The link for the t-shirt will be in the show description. So the uh, deluxe box set of the Ford Servants has started arriving for people. I still haven't got mine yet because I'm on the other side of the world from where it's been sent. But a few people have got it and I've seen some photos and they look great and everyone is happy. So if you want to get in on that, there will also be a link in the show description. But so, uh, yeah, let's not hang around too much in the kind of uh, sales pitch <laughs> of the podcast and get into the podcast proper. So in this episode, what I want to talk about is a bit about positivity and gratitude and that kind of thing. And where it came from is on the last, I was going to say the last season, in the last month of the journey, which is this year long shadow working use magic ritual meditation thing using servitors that we're doing over as part of the Patreon. The last month one was geared towards positivity, also including gratitude. And it's a very interesting kind of area because it brings up so many different things and covers so much. And it's one that I've kind of, I was going to say struggled, but struggle isn't the right word. It's because in a sense, I felt like I didn't give it my full effort because I found it hard and it was like struggle implies that you kept going at it and I did finish the whole thing and I did do all my daily tasks and all those kind of things but I just feel like I didn't give my full self into it and there was a number of reasons one of the big reasons I noticed because one of the ideas was that you take the next the next step you take you should always aim to take it positive and that if you're you know if someone have is having a disagreement with you rather than you know just doing your automatic shouting back and trying to win you take whatever's the next positive thing, even if that means that you don't win. But also keep in mind, you know, not, not to become a pushover right like that. The pos- next positive step could be to stand up for yourself. But it's whatever the positive the next step was that is better rather than just immediately go into your pattern or trying to win for the sake of winning or power or all those things. And what I found on sometimes is that, that I just didn't want to take the next positive step, that I wanted to wallow or submerge myself in the sort of seeding hate or bitterness or negativity and what I discovered by kind of looking at that and putting a mirror up to that is that there is an an awful lot of satisfaction and pleasure to be got from being negative and being in that negative state and while there's a kind of a power to it in one sense there's also a negation of responsibility which, you know, it's like that whole thing of just fuck it, fuck everyone, fuck it all. I'm not dealing with this. And what, like, like there's a power in that and that not, you know, not having to put up with stuff. But there's also I'm not dealing with the stuff that, you know, I probably should be dealing with. That is my responsibility. But again, there is this kind of satisfaction, which is interesting in that you think that such a negative emotion and something that feels, you know, it warm. We would say, we would say that being negative or whatever, for the most part, feels bad. And it does for the most part. But there is a kind of a glee or there is a kind of a a, a nice feeling or a, a safe, warm, familiar feeling of uh, that seeding, having, you know, argued with someone or, 
you know, shouted or released or, you know, some sort of anger thing or whatever. So I found that interesting and a good insight to, to know about myself that sometimes I feel negative, angry and bitter because I want to, because it's satisfying. And that's, I said, it's certainly not a good thing I wouldn't say, but I don't think it's a bad thing. It's a, it's a good, good and a bad thing. It's realizing that, that you're doing it and then probably, you know, don't do that <laughs> because there's better, more constructive ways. Because it's that thing of what's good for you in the moment and um, what's good for you right now isn't necessarily what's good for you this time next week, this time next year and then 10 years. And you should try and orientate, I feel, orientate yourself to doing things in the now that are also helpful in the future and for all times so that your overall experience is great. It's like it's it's great to get angry and, you know, release that in the in the in the second. But then how does that affect your friendship or how does that affect your workplace where you've had the argument next week, next month in the, in the grand scheme? How's that overall affecting your thing? So things that are good in the moment might necessarily be good long term or even medium term or short term. And that has to be taken into consideration. So any sort of satisfaction or <clears throat> excuse me, or kind of you know, good feeling you get out of the the um the anger or the not taking the positive step or, you know, saying that hurtful thing back because someone said something shitty to you rather than just letting it go. You have to kind of factor in the fact how long it's going to, you know, how overall that is going to affect your life and those around you. So it has to be good for you, it has to be good for those around you and good for society as a whole if you want to go that far or you can just be, you know, it's good for me, it's enough. That's up to you. I suppose the positivity thing has been around for a long while and it's become very fashionable and particularly gratitude has been seen as a really good thing. I first came across the idea of positive thinking by, and it's the most famous book I, I, I would suggest. It's the Norman Vincent de Peel book of The Power of Positive Thinking. And this was a book that my dad came across in the library when I was uh, quite young and he he was reading it and I, I uh, then read some of it as well. And it was, you know, it's about your affirmations and... Uh, coming across from positive thing will lead to more positive kind of reactions in the world and stuff like that. And you have, um, you know, a numerous other books that are like that as well. And there's different ideas. One of the other ones that kind of I read around that time was You Can Heal Your Life by Louise Hay. And that's kind of bringing it a bit further that it's, it's almost, it's no, it's not almost, it's totally getting into that territory of victim blaming where she would suggest that all the illnesses and all of those hardships and all that is because you have felt bad about yourself, that you haven't thought about things, that you get cancer because, you know, you've um, held resentment towards people. Stomach pain is because you can't stomach someone. If you've bad eyesight, it's something that you didn't want to see and all this. And it totally and utterly turns all of these things against the person themselves, which I think is bullshit. Because it doesn't factor in the fact that life is always, or not always, is a lot of times, is shitty. That there's genetics, that there's more to it than just you feel bad <clears throat> and you get cancer. You know, like there's a hell of a lot more going on. And that's not to say that these things don't have an impact. You can certainly see that resentments and uh, people keeping secrets or people, you know, holding back or feeling guilt and all these does have a huge impact on your life and your physical body. Absolutely. But that's not to say it's the total thing. And that's not to say that it's your fault. Because you could have these kind of, say, guilt feelings or whatever um, from uh, being abused, you know. And it's like someone like Louise here come in and going, oh, well, you know, you just have to feel better about yourself. You know, you have to, you, you've caused this, so you have to release that and let that go and stuff. I remember Ken Wilbur talking about when his wife um, was dying of cancer and that, that how just sick and tired they got of people telling them, oh, you just have to let go and you have to love and you have to release and you have to go through and see whatever it is that, you know, you're holding on to or resentment about that you have to let go. And he's just like, stop that. Don't do that. That's one of my main kind of criticisms of New Age and then leading into other things which are kind of pseudo positive thinking, but not quite like the secret and love attraction was those things that you set your focus on is what you will uh, manifest. Now, that's true. 
if you're looking for the negative, you will find the negative. And if you're looking for the positive, you'll find the positive on the whole. If you start thinking about red cars, you're going to see more red cars because you're noticing more red cars. And then you can go as woo-woo as you want as that in that you're manifesting more and more of these things uh, into your life. More than just, you know, the recognition or the, or the pattern recognition or the seeing the things. It's like... <clears throat> Sorry for my um, cough today. I will take a, a small drink. So it's like the the secret and love attraction and all that kind of Ill, all that of that ilk or semi kind of positive thinking, but it's not really geared on to feel better about your life to have a better. It's like to to think about getting a car and how that would feel like. That's the big one about the secret is you know getting this new brand new car, this bike or whatever it was that you were looking for. So it's not positive thinking in the sense of having a better experience to you know life and that thing. It's it's mostly about getting stuff, which is my kind of thing about the secret and love attraction which I, I do find it works i do personally have to say it works it works about as well as any of the things but it's just that its aim and it is its overall ethos isn't something i'm you know like I'm, I'm, i love the things i'm quite happy with getting the things but i don't think that should ever be the reason why you do anything like it's that the people like talk about magic and stuff and they all seem to just to want the things which I'm very interested in the personal development, becoming a better person, you know, becoming greater than you are or than you were yesterday and stuff like that. So there's a lot of kind of victim blaming going on in that kind of Louise Hay, The Secret, even Abraham Hicks, all of these kind of things where it's your fault. Now, that's not to say I don't think you should take responsibility for your life. You certainly should. And there's a lot to be said about doing that game of taking total responsibility for yourself, of everything that happens in the world is a reflection of your inside thing. And you can learn an awful lot about yourself from that. But I think that's all well and good to do that. It's when you start pushing that on other people and seeing their lives and saying that you are like this because of how you think and how you thought and your own things. Just hold on. My cat is going nuts. And I guess, though, that even the people who, like Lorna Bourne, is that Lorna Bourne who did the uh, Secret or is that you one who did the Angels one? Something, anyway, whatever her name is, was talking a bit about, uh, obviously, for, you know, copped on that the, the whole thing of the secret and stuff like that was a bit geared in the wrong way. So one of the books is called The Magic, I think, is mostly about gratitude. And uh, I think, you know, there is there is some scientific studies that I obviously don't have at hand and can't name at the top of my head, but that I was kind of, it's proven, proven as much as anything can be proven, I suppose, in this arena, that this thing of having three things you're grateful for you know, writing them down every day has a long term impact on your happiness and your outlook and stuff like that. And part of the journey that we did last month was that, well, that I did last month, you can do it whenever you want, and um, it's not set to set time, was that you had to pick three things every day that you were grateful for. And it starts off the first the first couple of days are very easy because, you know, you're into this, you're in the mood of a forest, you're, you want to, you know, do this kind of thing. Then it gets harder and harder. And not because you have less kind of things to be grateful for necessarily, although some days you kind of don't want to be saying the same things as you said before, because, you know, you, the intention is to have three new things every day. Um, it's that once that kind of sheen of the initial, you know, force into it or the, the, the initial idea of, you know, boost that you get, it's like the beginning of a diet or something where you're, yeah, I want to eat healthy and buy, you know, the Thursday, I want a Mars bar. Um, it's kind of like that. So the kind of the sheen or the gloss kind of lowers a bit and you kind of see the world again as, as you want. So the, that's when the battle starts and that's when it's hard. And there's some days that you just don't, as I spoke at the beginning, you just don't want to be positive. You know, you kind of want to have a reaction to the world. You want to ha you have this fuck you um, to the universe at large or to consciousness or whatever you want to, to call it, to, to existence. Or even if there was something I, I found in a couple of days that, because I didn't write it on, until... Um, like the end of the day or at the beginning of the next day about the day before and you might have had a wonderful experience and be really, really grateful in the moment like you know you might have I don't know some sort of work thing went out well for you or something happened that was good you know in a relationship or it's some fun time but by the time you got to write about it you weren't in that mood and you didn't feel the gratitude as, as well towards it so that, it's a very hard thing to do and I think overall it is rewarding because it does to, to force yourself through that because it does make you then start to have to look for the good rather than, you know, the the whole thing of where we default to the bad an awful lot of the time. 
where it, it, finding these three things to be grateful for every day means you have to look for them, you know, and you be, that's always in your mind, at the back of your mind, that these are, are, are the things to do. But the other thing that came out of all that is that this kind of, when you're trying to feel grateful and all that, is this whole thing of privilege, in a sense. And it's a very touchy subject. There's an awful lot of it that I just, it's not it's not what I'm talking about. And I um, so I have to be careful in a sense because I don't want to, to be misconstrued. And there is this idea that, you know, that when you're trying to be grateful for something or when you're, uh, when you're not when you're trying, when you are grateful and you're making record of all that, it's kind of, also, you know, has this echo or this kind of counterpart of that it's not so good for other people and all this kind of thing. And I'm, it's just something that's very prevalent on Facebook. And it's been said to me a number of times about anything, it, literally anything that I could, I said on Facebook, people, uh, not a lot of people, a number of people, it's happened two or three times, will go, you can only say that or you can only have that because of your white privilege. One of them was talking about Kevin Spacey and about how, um, you know, what, what are you meant to think of him now? Like, not necessarily him, but that Seven being one of my favourite films, uh, am I meant to feel differently about that film now because of the revelations of Kevin Spacey was? And it was kind of the argument that this guy was doing, he got really angry and he unfriended me and all this kind of stuff. It was like that. You can only have this conversation because of your privilege. Well, that's very true. Like, I mean, obviously, but I mean, you could say that about every single thing I've ever said in the world on Facebook or anywhere. And I just couldn't understand why talking about Kevin Spacey was any different from anything else I'd done. And he just, he wasn't having it at all. He got really annoyed. So this idea of privilege has to come into gratitude because it's like, when you're saying that you are, you know, happy or you're, you're grateful for these things, you're kind of feeling like you're in a blessed more than other people. And that can have an interesting kind of feeling within you of the, of the, of the, of the guilt towards you know, the people that don't have it. So then there's a kind of counterbalance between the gratitude and guilt that you have to get over. The gratitude of feeling that your life is good and that things are positive and focusing on all that kind of thing. And then realizing that for you to have that, then it has to not exist. Now, I don't think for a minute that for something good to happen to you or me or whoever it is, that something bad also has to happen to someone else. Some people genuinely do feel that. I don't, f that's not what I'm saying. It's more that... To be grateful for something means that it's not the opposite of whatever it was. Like to be grateful to have a meal means that it's, you know, it's that you, there's the opposite of that you are aware of some, of not having a meal and that kind of thing. So <clears throat> the thing about privilege as well that kind of gets me and it's just, it's mostly, you know, male, white, cis privilege, all, all those things that I am. And uh, I understand it. There's, there's definitely, I'm not disputing that there isn't factors in it and all that. But it's just, it can be quite frustrating though in that, because I think an awful lot of people on Facebook, particularly because that's where I spend most of my time in the social media, just kind of put all of these things in one basket. And it's like, I had a woman debating to me and she, quite passionately uh, about my privilege and about how I was living on the land of, uh, you know, on the blood uh, on the dead Native Americans. I said, well, I don't at all. She goes, but you're white. You know, this, this is, this is what it is. Because, yeah, but I've, I've been to America once, four times, for four days. Um, pretty sure Native Americans never lived in Ireland. And I, you know, my ancestors didn't kill any of them to, to take the land or whatever. And it's like kind of that a lot of people seem to equate white with American white. And it's like that whole thing, you know, that meme of oh, white people. And I mean, like sometimes just go, you know, American white people. Like it's, it's like, we don't do that here. You know, that that's not, doesn't happen in the rest of the world necessarily. And even this thing of that, you know, the white people should be apologetic or feel bad about the slavery in, in America. And I do feel bad about that. I think that's, you know, that's, that's definitely one of the worst things, you know, that's happened in recent times or whatever. But like it's, not connected to me in the sense like I have not benefited from that in the way people in America may have benefited from it. None of my relations and my ancestors own slaves that I can be, you know, I can be aware of because it just wasn't something that was done here. But yet I'd still kind of, it's f said that, you know, I, uh, as a collective, as the white male, I should be, you know, have the original sin of, um, of slavery, you know, of, of, feeling apologetic, that personally apologetic for slavery. And I'm not sure how I feel about that because, I mean, I'm sure I have in a, a no, enormous ways um, got privilege from um, the success of America and like, you know, different things like t 
you know, technology that was come out of America or books or authors that have, you know, maybe had had relatives that um, owned slaves or whatever. But it's like by by degree, by de- degrees, by degrees, and just kind of this whole idea of the gratitude to then coming in is that there seems to be this bent that on one side people say, you know, you should be more grateful ever. On the other side, people trying to pull other people down and put back this original sin idea that you were born with original sin because of what your ancestors did, because of what your race did or what your country did or what your gender or sex did historically. So that you could, like all this kind of Catholic stuff that you got originally for as original sin has now been turned into kind of a social thing. Now, there's a lot to be said in all that and, you know, there, there are good points, but I think it's when you go to any extreme in all of these things, that you kind of lose the grip on, on the whole thing in that that thing not all men and I, 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 I do I think understand where that's coming from and all that kind of thing and I do then understand when people go but I, I you know men go I, I'm not like that you know I, so it's not all men and I think that's more a, an issue of language and uh, then the actual thing that people are trying to say by that and all that. So don't get me wrong in any way that I'm not saying that there is any of these things aren't issues and all of that kind of things. But when people on Facebook are saying that all white people are living on land, you know, that they killed Native Americans for, well, that's just not true. And I don't think that's helpful. Or giving out to someone for talking about Kevin Spacey because I'm, you know, you would only be able to talk about that by having white privilege. I don't think that's particularly helpful, unless I'm missing a point here. Like, are black people not able to talk about Kevin Spacey? Or Chinese people? Or, I don't know, Russians or whatever? I don't know what, what how exactly the race thing has been broken down in these kind of privileged things, other than pointing at the fucking pa- patriarchy or whatever. And how much am I to blame for these things personally or whatever, or historically or whatever? Ireland, for the most part, we were the underdogs in an awful lot of things. You know, we could talk about the 800 years of, you know, English suppression and all of those kind of things. But yeah, we were, all, were both the same race, you know, the Irish and the English. Or, the, you know, there was just the Celts and there's the Anglo-Saxons. So it's not exactly the same race, but it's the same kind of historical stock, if you want, or whatever. And, the, you know, so it's like, how's it all breaking down? And I think that's one of the points that kind of Jordan Peterson is talking about. And we've gone way off on a tangent here, but it is how it goes. Where he talks about the difference between the equality or the uh, of opportunity, equal opportunity versus, um, you know, forced equal outcomes. Where you have everyone has equal opportunity, where everyone is uh, has the space to go out and try and do whatever they want. Whereas equal outcomes mean everyone, everyone is forced to have the same outcome. Where so, like, the big one is the, like the page gap between uh, men and women. So uh, that men and it should be forced to have men and women to have the same amount of pay. I think if two people are doing exactly the same jobs with exactly the same, you know, future and everything is equal, then of course they should be. That's absolutely fine. Um, I don't think anyone would disagree that. Maybe Jordan Peterson would. But it's like that. He says that the reason why you can't have the um, equal of outcome is because, you know, where does it stop? Do you stop between man and woman? And then if, if it's if it's is a white man and white, you know, white woman, black woman, is it? a single black woman is it white single lesbian is it white single trans person with a baby or where where are you know where do you break it down to make everyone equal you know is it white trans with a baby who has certain uh you know from scotland you know like he's kind of saying that you can't there's nowhere to break that down so where do you put that everything is kind of equal and it kind of reverse that where is everyone culpable or where is everyone to blame where is the whole thing like is an Irish white Irish person who's, you know, not been part of the American system uh, only as a secondary from media, literature, TV shows, technology, that kind of thing. Are they equally to blame for white per- the white person historically uh, sins that they've done in such things as slavery? Am I as a white man responsible for that? Happened in a different country with no relations of mine. But I think. Some people would say yes, and I don't. I don't know the answer. It's just something I've talked about that came up as part of this whole thing of thinking of gratitude. Because the more you think about the things that you have, you have to realize about the things that other people have uh, don't have, or how you were in a situation, how you got them. So, like, 
it's, it's part of it and it can lead you into a kind of a, a, a guilt kind of factor in the whole thing and, and which negates the entire thing of what you're trying to do from a gratitude point of view, which is trying to see the good in life and see the, you know, rather than focusing on the negative. But if seeing the good in life, <clears throat> excuse me, is forcing you also to see the darkness, then, you know, that that's something you have to kind of work through. So I'd be interested to hear what people's kind of thoughts and all that and where the boundaries of these things are and how to feel about being grateful towards stuff, towards things to have in their life with this issue of privilege, from, you know, coming from a place of privilege that you can, you know, it's easy for you to be grateful because you've had all the opportunities or you ha- you're, in, you're a white cis male um, part of the pay- patriarchy or you know, whatever it is, you know, and at what point is it just kind of trying to knock the, the you know, the tall, or cut the tall poppies down or, you know, knock the person off the, you know, they're literally, oh, you, who do you think you are getting away? Like, but there has to be an element of that too, of people trying to, you know, pull down other people to the, their own level rather than pushing themselves forward. But then there's the whole thing of that we don't have equal opportunity we, you know there's people in the world that certainly don't have the same opportunities that I, I've had or whatever so it's a whole big kind of thing and I don't know I don't know is it is it even possible to kind of unravel all of that or is it just something that's too complicated and it's too sophisticated to fully unravel is it like looking for that universal principle of that one thing that will explain everything and maybe life's too complicated like that maybe we that's a humans trying to do the whole maths thing of it and it's just it's too much of a sprawl too much of a thing to you know fit in a box so it's interesting so please do let me know about um your um your history with gratitude if you've done it or if you haven't done it it's, you know start doing it and see what you're thinking see if you come across that wall of you know the privileged wall or of the seeing by seeing the light it does it also shine a torch in the darkness or does it make the darker darker and all of those kind of things and do you feel that the things like the secret and love attraction and positive thinking and particular things like louise hay and that kind of thing is victim blaming or do you genuinely think that only, you know, your thoughts, you totally do manifest your entire world and that if you have got cancer, then it is your fault or whatever, those kind of things. So I'll be interested to hear all about that from you. So, uh, so yeah. So that was another episode of the Tommy Kelly podcast and I have to apologize my throat got very dry during that so there was a number of coughing things so I do apologize but I had a bit of wheezing for some reason. I usually don't record these things until later in the day so it's quite early so maybe my lungs just haven't woke, woken up quite yet but uh, yeah it's not, it's not good to be wheezing I don't enjoy that it's not something that uh, happens to me often though particularly since I've given up smoking which is, I think is three years or four years this next month that's pretty good delighted so if you would like to hear more of this rambly type stuff, then you can go to TommyKellyPodcast.com, which is T-O-M-M-I-E Kelly Podcast.com. And all of them that are there, it's hosted by SoundCloud. And so, you know, you can listen to it on SoundCloud, but it's also on, um, the, you know, it's, it's on iTunes, it's on Pocket Cast, it's on Stitcher, it's all of those places. If it's not on somewhere that you would like to listen to, then let me know, unless it's Spotify, because Spotify just won't listen to me for you, no matter how many times I've asked them. I don't know how that works. So if you know how to get me on Spotify, please let me know. If you want to know more about me in general, then you can go to adventuresandwooboo.com and there you will find a whole host of stuff. All my photography is there, all my art is there. You'll find a bit, a bit more about the 40 Servants, which is a magic and divination deck that I have put together. That's become quite popular and people like it. And the Four Devils there, which is kind of a simplified kind of, not simplified version, it's a... It's a a smaller system that can work well for you in in the, in the vein or in the kind of style of the 47. It's kind of like if you want, years ago, Tony Robbins did this 30 day personal power thing and it was 30 days every day. And then years later, he ended up doing a seven day one because people didn't want to do the 30 days. So the four servants, the four servants, and then you have the four devils. So like the four devils are based on health, wealth, happiness and wisdom. You know, so it's just four pillars of those things, whereas four servants breaks down a bit more into more consecutive pieces. Um, there's a YouTube channel that you can also check out, and I've done a vlog, I've done uh, numerous things, loads of videos there. There's a whole four servants video course, which is free for you to 
to use or to watch whatever like so if you want to know more about the four servants and how to use them in a video course type style then you can find that on my youtube and that uh, link will be found also at adventuresandmovie.com on the social medias i'm usually at tommy kelly which is t-o-m-m-i-e kelly that's instagram 500px Flickr, twitter all of those things or if not it'll be tommy kelly artist or something similar just if you in tommy kelly you usually find me there's an adventures and movie page on facebook there's a 47s group there's a patreon that you can uh, check out if you want if you want to help me out with your monies and get that through either searching tommy kelly on patreon through the link on adventures or by going directly to tommy and that'll bring you to the patreon and as part of the patreon uh, there's a number of different rewards, which includes uh, my PDFs of my books, of the comics, graphic novels, the digital deck, uh, access to the thing, The Journey, which is this meditative uh, shadow working 12 months using servitors type of thing. And you get the podcast early, you get everything else early, a couple of days early, all of those things. And there's a, you know, other bonuses. Just check them out there on the, the side sidebar of the patreon page so that's it good people of the internet for this week tomorrow i'm going to see lcd sound system which should be fun and then uh the rest of the week is taken up with um just you know getting things together if to do the uh more merchandise i have to work on some other little bits and pieces that i have to have to get together to um to get out it's just all you know getting the t- getting through the to-do list on top of that there's a number of hospital visits we have to go because uh, we're getting into that later stages of the pregnancy and stuff like that so it's busy times but happy times i'm on the, on the grateful mood today so may you also uh, be surrounded by gratefulness may i hope your life is privileged i hope everyone who, you know that uh, you, you do have you know better things in your life not put other people down but just i hope your life is good that's basically what i'm saying in a kind of a terrible way i hope things are working out for you i think that i hope that this time last year that you're in a better position than you were this time last year and i hope that your best days are ahead and i hope that you're surrounded by people and things and events and circumstances that would make you feel grateful and happy and positive about life and may the increase of positivity and gratefulness in your life ever expand exponentially until you become one with the light and return home to the great place that we came from. May you be well, people. Have a great week.